everybody. Welcome to another Ask Nera to Joy video. I have my model here with me today, Danielle, and she is experiencing um, a little acne, hormonal acne here. We can see she has some painful nodules on her face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cleanse off her skin. Her skin I can see is a little surface dry and again that oily underneath, which tends to be a huge problem for a lot of people is surface dryness and oily underneath. She's very dry around her eyes too, so we're going to make sure Danielle goes home today with an eye gel to use around her eyes. Just something that's really hydrating to help those fine little lines because they're not really wrinkles that are going to stay there. These ones I can see it's just because her eye area is so dry. So first we're going to cleanse off her skin and get going with that. Now I'm using Rejuvi K Cleanser on her. It is a, a great cleanser that has a little bit of cucumber in it, it has aloe in it. It is a cleanser that you can use to remove eye makeup as well and it does not sting the eyes. So it's a really nice all-in-one cleanser. Now I can feel working on Danielle's skin that her skin's really surface dry. But she's oily underneath. And not terribly oily, but a little oily underneath. She's got a few little bumps on her forehead, so I'm going to bring the camera over later so you can see what I'm talking about here. And I can tell these little bumps have been there some time, so they're not going to be the kind of bumps that you can just squeeze and come out easy. So we've really got to help hydrate her levels because her levels are really dehydrated. So we're going to have to hydrate. I'm going to massage in some treatment products into her skin today because if I go to extract her skin without doing that, it's going to make it really difficult. So I'm just now removing the cleanser with some disposable sponges. I worked the cleanser into the skin for a minute and it was the Rejuvi K cleanser that I worked into the skin. So when I look at... Um, when I look at Danielle's skin, you can see that, and if we could zoom in and have a look here, that would be really great. So we're just going to put these over her eyes. Hold on one second. We can pick it up again. In. So we're going to bring the light down here and have a look at Danielle's skin. So what we have here is we can see that her pustules on her face are on her cheek area, her lower cheek, they have redness around them and the redness shows that there's a lot of inflammation around there where you know that you have to be very careful because these pustules are ones that we know are hormonal because to touch them they're going to be painful and there's a lot of inflammation around there. So when you squeeze pustules when they are very deep like this and they're hormonal, it's very easy to spread infection. So you want to make sure that you're touching the ones that have only a little bit of white in them. The ones that do not have any white, the infection, you don't want to be squeezing those ones and taking them. You can also see on Danielle's skin she's got some larger blackheads over here on the side um, and also she's got a little fine facial hair so you've got to make sure when we're cleansing and all her treatment products that she's doing whether it be um, that we're exfoliating or whether we're working in treatment serums you want to make sure you get under that fine facial hair and sometimes where there is a pustule or a papule a pimple of any sort you want to make sure if there's no hair inside there because sometimes, like this one here, and I'll grab a little pointer, like this one over here. Now that one there, if you look really closely, you can see it has a hair coming out of it. So what's really important is that when there is a hair, inside a pustule, you want to pull it out with the tweezers because that hair around the bulb of the hair will carry more bacteria and it won't heal as well. So a couple of these, when I'm extracting, I will be removing the hair from the actual pustule themselves. She has a little bit of scarring and some pitting, which she's um, you know been dealing with acne for some time. So you can see on her cheeks where she's got some pitting, she's got a lot of little blackheads in there amongst it. So 
Her skin is not being cleaned as well as, as well as I would like to see. So we're going to do a lot of cleaning on her, a lot of extracting, removing these blackheads that you can see here in the cheek. Um, a couple of these here we're going to remove as well, take out where she's got the little pustule on top there. There is infection around, so you have to be careful in taking them out. This one over here on the cheek here, we are not going to be touching that one. You can see there's infection deep down underneath there, but that one is a do not squeeze one. So around her jaw area, she's quite red and inflamed. And so we're going to first of all work in some treatment serums, which I'm going to be using my flavonoid again to help calm her skin and to help with her scarring because she has got pitting, but she's also got some ruddiness with her scarring, a little bit of the purpley red in there that we want to really sort of lighten and brighten that while we're working on her skin at the same time. So she is an oily skin. You can see she's got blackheads on her nose. She's got, uh, you know, she's oily all over, but she's very surface dry and her levels are lacking hydration. So you can be an oily skin and have uh, and have your levels be very dehydrated, which is what Danielle's skin is. She really needs to feed her skin, which is why her skin doesn't heal really quickly. And so um, we don't want her to be left with marks. So we're going to feed her skin some nutrients and then we're going to start on some extractions. So what we've done here now with Danielle is we've cleansed her skin. I'm going to exfoliate her skin. I've got my exfoliating mask that you've all seen me use a lot. It's a, a papaya-based enzyme. It has lemon peel powder, it has papaya, and it does have a little bit of glycolic in it too. So it is going to be a little bit stingy on her skin. We're going to work that into a skin, into Danielle's skin to get rid of that dryness on top. Now Danielle, because she has a more olive skin, you have to be really careful when you're doing extractions because it's easy to upset the pigment cells, the melanocytes and you don't want to have her have markings on her skin that are going to stay a long time. But the one thing that's really important is that she has to feed her skin. She's got to get her skin healthy because right now her skin is not healthy enough to support all the things that I'm going to do. So I'm going to be giving her a home care regimen and we are going to have Danielle back in two weeks as well to see what uh, where her skin is at because it's going to be a lot better than what it is today. So we're going to work this in just for a couple of minutes. Her skin is very surface dry and I can feel her levels are not hydrated. We want to really work this in so that it, uh, it cleans those pores and gets rid of that dryness. So we're taking off Danielle's, the exfoliator off Danielle's face. I'm using disposable sponges. I'm using a cooler water because the exfoliator does sting a little bit. It has a papaya, it has lemon peel powder and has glycolic in it. So we're just removing it here off her face. And because Danielle has a little bit of scarring on her skin, we're going to work in that flavonoid to really help hydrate the skin because her levels are very, very dehydrated. So it, uh, it makes it hard to heal, the skin to heal when your levels are really dehydrated. So this is the Q-flavonoid, which is why it's this yellow color. We know that the Q-flavonoid in the Rejuvi line is a great hydrator in that it really feeds the skin a lot of nutrients. It's what we call a bioflavonoid, and it, uh, it really helps lift the skin and just improve those levels with hydration, which is going to help her skin to heal really quickly. I'm going to use it right up around her eyes because she's super dry around her eyes. So I'm not going to massage her skin for a really long time as if I would someone who was a drier skin, but I am just going to work this in enough to help to lift it and hydrate those levels. Now this would be a nice time to use steam at the same time. So we're just taking off the treatment serum that I put on Danielle's skin, which is the Q bioflavonoid. And it uh, leaves everything a little yellow, as you can see the color of the towels, but it's just such a great product in how it helps the skin. And it's also a very important part of the lightening the red, the scarring that she has. So we, her skin looks so much better just from doing that. Okay, so now we've steamed the skin and I'm going to be doing some extractions on her skin. So when I do extractions, I, uh, I like to tear my tissue in half like this 
and I just fold the top of the corner over and then I wrap it around my finger like that. So I know it's sort of always just nice and easy. So what we have is we can see she's got some blackheads up here, quite large blackheads. So I know her skin has not had a really good cleaning where she needs she needs a really good cleaning. So see these really large blackheads here and what we're going to do is we're just going to take those out. And uh, I like to start on the forehead when I'm doing my extractions. So see they're nice and easy, they come out very easy. But it's important to uh, remove blackheads because you want to be able to shrink the pores after her skin's all clean. And you also want to make sure that you, you get it all out. You, you don't want to leave anything left inside the skin there because it won't heal properly. So you want to make sure you get all, all the infection out there. And that one might have a little bit more still in it. So you can see there's a little bit more coming out because you can see the skin was still a little bit bumpy. So I know that there was um, another tissue. This one here has still a little bit more in it. I can see, you can see it's still a little bumpy. There's a little bit of white there still. So again, we want to make sure we're getting it all out because if you don't get it all out and there's the final bit there, then her skin is not going to heal properly. So, so what we've done is we've extracted Danielle's skin. We've removed the blackheads. We've removed some of the, the little spots on her face where there was infection. And now we know her skin is going to heal really well because we've got it all out. And uh, she's going to have another treatment product put on her skin right now. So this here is just a tonic. It's the Rejuvi R toner that I'm using. I like sometimes just to use a tonic on the skin. I could also use on Danielle's skin the whitening toner, but I will do that after I have the infection. So next, in two weeks when we have Danielle come back, my toner of choice will be the whitening toner because we're going to really start working on lightening the scarring the next time. Right now we need to focus on cleaning her skin really well and hydrating it so that we can, we can get everything out and so that her skin is going to heal really quickly. And then we're going to work on once her skin starts to see, and you'll see next in two weeks when she comes back, that her skin's going to be very clean, but she's still going to be left with some red marks. So then we're going to start working on the lightening and brightening and just clearing up and working with her scarring. This is going to be a little stingy. Okay, so what I'm putting on Danielle's skin right now is the normalizing formula. This one here is a professional product. It is one that has a little bit of urea peroxide and amino acids. It's especially for oil. It helps to work on oil underneath, in the deep in the levels of the skin. And we want to make sure the great thing about this particular product is if you feel it, it's quite oily in texture, but it because it doesn't dry the outer layer, it just really gets in there and helps work on the infection underneath the levels of the skin. So that's what we want. We're only going to leave it on her skin for a minute. Her skin will be stinging. It is a product, an AHA product that is designed especially for oily skin, which is great because a lot of AHAs are for a more combination to drier skin. So this one here is especially for an oily skin and uh, it works really well. Um, it's going to be quite stingy on her face. I'm only going to leave it on a minute or two. As I said, it's a professional product and we're going to be taking it off with cool water and sponges. So I'm removing the normalizing formula off Danielle's skin. It's a product, a professional product that's designed especially for oily skin and it really helps work on the infection underneath the levels. It's an AHA and her skin is going to be a little stingy right now. The Rejuvi Alpha Hydroxy Acid products are quite a low pH. They are a 2.8. If you work with something like a Dr. Murad, his is a 3.0. So it doesn't always mean that if you're working with an AHA that is a 25%, which is the fruit complex in the Rejuvi line, because it has a low pH, it would be equivalent to say a Murad, which is a 3.0, maybe his 35%. 
So I hope you, um, for all you Estes out there, are catching what I'm saying. Sometimes it's not just about the percentage of an AHA. You have to know what the pH of the product is because that makes a big difference. So Rejuvi is a 2.8 pH, and which makes it a little bit stronger than, say, a Murad. So you have something in reference to compare with. And his Rejuvi's AHA that is a a number one AHA, the complex, it's a 25% and that would be equivalent to say a 35 or a 40% of a product that's pH is a 3.0. So right now I'm just putting some healing gel on Danielle's skin because her skin would have been a little stingy after we took off that normalizing formula. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a mask. Okay, so what I'm choosing to use on Danielle, the mask that I'm choosing to use on Danielle's skin is a purifying mask. If I left this on her skin for a long time, it would dry. And because she's already surface dry, I don't want to do that. I've added in with this mask a lightening agent. These are the Rejuvi lightening treatments. You can mix it with a purifying mask. So when I'm doing working with someone that has melasma or any form of scarring, I like to use a little ampule with it. I mix it in with the mask. Uh, you have to let it set for a minute and then you apply it to the skin. And so she has a purifying mask. She's got one of these ampules added to it and it now stays on the skin for 20 minutes. Okay, so we have the purifying mask that has the lightening ampule in with the purifying mask. It's gonna help work on Danielle's scarring. I'm putting a little bit of eye gel around her eyes and I wanna put it on before her mask dries, I want to put it on because her eye area is really dry. So we want to make sure that that mask doesn't sit tight around her eye because we don't want anything tightening. I've, I'm not double dipping, I'm using the end of the other end of the Q-tip and we're just going to put that in around her eyes like this so it's not going to allow the mask to dry tight up under the eye. Now when you add the ampule to the purifying mask you cannot put a, sometimes I use a lavender paraffin over top. You must leave it on its own and it must stay on for 20 minutes. So we're going to leave that and we'll be back to take it off shortly. Okay, so we've, we've cleansed, we've exfoliated, we have um, worked in a treatment serum, which was a Q-flavonoid, just to help hydrate Danielle's skin and just to help her levels really make her, like, I mean, her skin looks completely different right now. We've really fed it we've, and it's going to heal. I know it's going to heal really nice and uh, her skin just feels good, it looks good. And um, after that, we've done our extractions We've now removed the mask and I'm going to put some healing gel on her skin. The healing gel is a great base for anyone who has oily skin. It's great to use after any peels. It's great to use as a moisturizer on a really oily skin. Just even if you're going to the gym to work out and you don't want to put a heavy moisturizer on and you're an oily skin, the healing gel is really great. It takes a minute to dry into the skin. It's mostly an aloe-based gel. It's very, very healing and it's great for sunburns. It's just a really great product. So we've worked that into her skin now and I'm going to put on, she's going to go home, it's quite late at night here, and I'm going to put a retinol on her and she's going to go home and that's how she's going to go to bed with that on her skin. So some retinols are quite yellow and this one here is quite yellow. Again, this is called the Rejuvi A Night Gel Complex, which means it has a variety of the A groupings, the molecules, which is your acetate, your palmitate, your A1, your A2. It has your retinoic acid, your retinol in it. So it's really going to work on a lot of the levels because we're working with different molecular sizes and weights with the vitamin A. We know it's going to really get in there and work on the different levels within her skin, which is what she needs because she has scarring and pitting. So it's really important for her to work with something like a, a vitamin A complex. Retin-A, the prescription strength, is usually just retinoic acid. It's just one molecule. This one here is a complex, so its benefits are it works on all the levels in the skin because it's different. They're all different molecular sizes and weights, so they go to different levels in the skin. Okay, so once again, I'm putting the eye gel around her eyes. She's going to go home with this on, and we... Uh, 
We've got it's all going to be really good and I can't wait for you to see her skin in two weeks. I cannot wait to see her skin in two weeks and just see how, how much better her skin is and how much better her scarring is. So, uh, so thank you for coming in. Thanks for being with us and we'll see you back in two weeks. Bye.